So in this video, we are going to make sure that the buttons here are grayed out when you can't afford to buy a tower. And that means when we play this game, we'll see that we have an amount of uh, currency up here. And there is um, eh, the amount of currency, these, or, or gold or money or whatever we want to call it, that these towers um, are require, requires to be able to be bought. So right now we have five. And when I buy this for four, for example, I only have one left, so everything should actually be grayed out here because I can't afford any of it. However, if I would replay the game and place one for two, then we have three left, then these two should still be visible and these should be grayed out so that they... Um, so it's easier for the player to see that these uh, towers are not affordable anymore. So how do we do that? Well, if we open up our script, we have um, inside the game manager, we have our currency property. And every time we change, change our currency by buying something, we are executing this code I'm highlighting here. And that means we can actually do something here to make sure that the tower buttons will be grayed out if, um, if we don't have enough currency. So we can do this in a lot of different ways. And I think I want to create an event that triggers. So whenever we buy something, the event is triggered and then all the buttons can check up on that event. And check okay do I have or do the player have enough money to buy whatever I'm selling on this button so first of all we need to go to the top of the script and there we have to create a new event so let's try to go up here to the top and then we have to make a public it's totally okay to make an event public uh, because events are meant to be shared among other classes and everything so it makes sense to make them public, even though normally we don't just make fields public, but events are like um, not the same case. So we are going to call this currency changed. And let's say changed. So this is my event. And right now there's nothing called currency changed. That's because I need to make a delegate of the type currency changed so that I can link it, the event to it. So up here, I make a public delegate and we say currency changed so what's this well the delegate is a way of triggering an event and the delegate needs to have some kind of structure that is that suits the the function that needs to call this event right so right now it returns void this is my public delegate that returns void so I can make a function that returns void that it can trigger this event so we can actually just write here, this is a delegate for the currency changed event. And then down here, we can write uh, an event that is triggered when the currency changes. When we have created our event, we can create a function for executing this event when we need it right so we can go to around by tower it doesn't matter where we place it i just want to place it here so we can make a public void on currency changed so as you can see here i'm calling it on currency changed right and it fits with the name we have called up here currency changed here so usually when you trigger an event you make a function for it so that you can check if, uh, let's see if I can find my keys, if uh, changed isn't null. So new version of Visual Studio is going to grade this out maybe because it thinks it's redundant, but you actually need to check this because if nothing is listening to the event and you try to trigger stuff, then you will get a null reference exception. So just to make sure we don't get a null reference exception when we call changed, we have that functionality. So this function here will call changed. So now we need to trigger this function. So we're triggering that function up here in our event, uh, let's see, not event, sorry, in our property. So here we can say on currency changed. Okay, so every time we set a new currency on currency changed, it's triggered. So we can basically just, just for testing, we can go down here and say debug dot lock and a debuff debug dot lock currency 
changed. Okay, so now we create the event and it should be triggered. Let's try to save and jump into Unity and buy something. Then there should be written currency changed in uh, in the uh, what is it called the console. There you go. And we have nothing written, I guess. Nope. And I got a little ahead of myself because of course it doesn't work uh, because nothing is is listening to the event. So. Of course, this is not going to be triggered because nothing is listening to this event here, or we haven't instantiated it. So it is null, so we'll never execute this. If I would do like this, well, then it would trigger, um, but it doesn't make sense because nothing is in it right now. But let's try if we do like this, then it says currency changed here, regardless of what happens, right? But we're not interested in that. We want to write it in here, like so. Okay, so let's try to write the rest of the code. So inside the tower button script, we need to make a function that checks the currency every time we click something. So let's make a new function and let's call it, I guess we can call it something like price check or something. So let's make a private word called price check. So in here, we need to say if the price of this button is less or equal to the game manager that instance that currency. So if my price is less than the game manager's currency, so if my price is less than the amount of money the player have, then we simply say get component uh, image dot color equals color dot white so then we set the color of the image to white so we just keep setting it white even though it it's, it's uh, it was white in, in from the get-go so we have a price text dot color equals color dot white I guess so if the price is higher than the currency then we can't afford the uh, afford the tower so we're going to make an else here this is elf, we are going to say exactly the same actually, copy and paste this and we replace white with gray, like so. So if we have enough money, we set it to white. If we don't have enough money, we put it to gray. So right now this price check is not being used for anything at all. So the price check needs to be used so it, it, get, it gets executed every time the event is triggered. So if we go to start here, we can say game manager that instance dot changed so the changed event needs to be connected to our price check right so we can say plus equals new currency changed and we want to call a void function called price check like so so now this function here we have inside our tower button is triggered every time on currency changed is called because change is executed and because we are saying that this function should listen to the changed event then it's going to be executed every time we change it so let's try to play the game and actually if we go here the debug.log is actually pretty redundant we don't need it uh, let's just remove it here and save um, and go to unity let's try and see what happens here okay so everything is colored place one tower and these two are grayed out now because we can't afford them right and if i place this one these two will also be grayed out because i can't afford them so every time our currency changes this will be updated accordingly so i'm not sure i can't even remember if we implemented it so that we will gain money every time we kill something but these should turn back to white when we kill something and we get enough money for something so that's it for this video thank you very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel like my facebook page and follow me on twitter also if you like my videos please um, consider sharing the videos on your social media like uh, facebook and twitter and such um, and also if you really like my work you can also support me in different ways and you can click the link on the screen right here to figure out how to support me